What's up guys, it's Dorian. I know it's been a little while since I did a distro review, so I thought it was about time to do it. And so let's just have a look here. I've had a lot of people saying they use Debian or and I should do a review on Debian. And I've also had a lot of people talking about Pop! OS. So Pop! OS being based on Ubuntu and Ubuntu being based off Debian. I thought, okay, well, very similar, but turns out they're not. I'm, I don't want to critique, that's a lie, yes I do, I want to critique their website claims. Now, I know when you're trying to lure them in to try your distro, you're going to make certain claims and whatnot. I'm not taking away from the work that they put into it because I loaded it up and I flipped through it really quick and I'm pretty impressed. It's just some of the things on their website um, talking about the streamlined workflow window snapping keyboard navigation do not disturb um, you know other desktop stuff search everything nightlight all these things are gnome they're not something that pop made I just want to make that clear of course, you're going to include that in your distro because that is part of the distro. That's your desktop that you chose, but that's GNOME or GNOME. Um, that's their features, not really the OS, but because you use it, it's part of the OS. Do you know what I mean? So anyways, there are other things like their encryption by default and whatnot that they did do for sure. Uh, and like I said, I'm not taking away from the distro itself. It is good. I'm just saying the way it's advertised, I don't really agree with. But moving on, when you click on their download page, you have the option of downloading the Intel slash AMD version and the NVIDIA version, which I think is really smart because this is a way of making sure that the package, the whole OS is ready to go, configured a certain way instead of downloading it and then trying to configure it afterwards. A lot of distros, it takes a lot of work to configure it for NVIDIA, especially if you have Optimus. There's a lot of configuration, you have to do a lot of manual stuff depending on the OS. With Manjaro, it's literally one line that you type and it's all done for you with Ubuntu and OpenSUSE and several others, it's quite a bit more work. So I downloaded the NVIDIA version and it seems to work just fine in a virtual machine as well. And that is what I would install on hardware. Let's fire it up. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm realizing too, I spend way too much time finding different backgrounds for all of my videos, just to make it a little interesting so you guys aren't seeing the same thing all the time. But uh, I usually stick with whatever distro it is as the background and then whatever, but I gotta download some more. If you guys have any suggestions for a place to get some cool backgrounds, hit me up. And okay, anyways, we're up and running now. So the cool thing about Pop! OS is it does a little pre-setup right at the beginning. So you just pick your language and then it asks you where you are. Default keyboard. And then we can do demo mode, clean install or a custom one. Custom one will bring up your partitions and it will let you choose what you want to do. For now, I'm going to try demo mode. So it's GNOME, first of all. It is 3.28.2, I believe. So the newest one, uh, 3.28.2, yes. So here we have the terminal and let's have a look. We're using 8.36, let me close that. Probably about 800, 800 to, you know, okay, 776. That's about what you're gonna get for any GNOME desktop, so. This is normal here, and we're probably using, this is based on Ubuntu 18.04. So as you can see, we're using kernel 4.15, which is 
fairly new for Ubuntu. And I can only assume that if we have a look at the sources that it's using for where it's getting its packages from, they are indeed all Ubuntu, except for theirs, where they'll have their um, custom software. All right, so let's have a look at the included software with this. We have, this is all. So as you can see, there's not a ton. There isn't five pages of stuff, which is actually nice. So you've got your calculator, calendar, files, uh, which is Nautilus, Firefox, Geary, which I like. This is actually my email client of choice. It's very lightweight. It's super easy to set up. It will, you just enter in your email address and your password, and it takes care of finding all the IMAP and POP3 information. It figures all that out for you. You don't have to enter it all in. Pretty awesome and really nice, clean layout. Uh, moved on, Gparted, the installation program, Office, Pop Shop Settings, System. I'll, I'll move on to these after. So Terminal, Text Editor, with, which is Get It, and Weather. So I like that they already made little groups here. Uh, I made a video on Meow, which I'll put a link in the corner up here. And it is a program that lets you edit your no menu and make folders and move things around and organize it like this. But it's nice that this distro already did this for you. So in your system, you have your disk usage analysis, input method, password and keys, power statistics, startup applications, and system monitor. Pretty standard stuff. Pretty standard software that comes with GNOME with pretty much any distro. And let's move on to the utilities. So we have the archive manager, character map, document viewer, Eddy, fonts, help, USB flash or video, simple scan. Okay, uh, Eddy, I'm actually not sure what this is. Install some apps, drag and drop files. Oh, okay, so this is to um, manually install packages. Okay, well, that's handy. So I do like how they laid out the utilities. This is basically what I do with Meow. I will make a utilities folder and I'll drop everything that I don't wanna see that I hardly ever use or that I use through the file manager. I'll drop it into this folder and it cleans it up really nice. So now going back here, and that is what I would install Office, on this hardware. is Office 6. So LibreOffice is the newest version uh, was the standard for Ubuntu 16.04 coming near the end and I believe 17.10 still had LibreOffice 5 I believe I don't remember right now um, but based off the new version it's using 6 so of course that's because they are using the bionic repositories which is now up and that is what I would install on hardware and Firefox should be uh, Quantum 60, which is again, one of the very newest. Yeah, Firefox Quantum 60. So that's awesome. So everything is up to date. Now, one thing that I will notice, and you may have noticed is the software center is their own software center, which is, I think it's pretty cool. It's nice to use, to make your own thing or to use the existing one and to just customize it to the point of it being completely your own. So this is really nice. I like how it's laid out. I like the big buttons, um, but it's basically still using um, debt packages just like before. Remember, this is based off of Ubuntu, which means you could install things with apt in the terminal if you want to. This also means that you can install Synaptic if you want to and manage your packages that way. Not that there's anything wrong with this. This is perfectly fine. I'm just pointing out that you have the option. If I were to search in here, I can type GNOME tweaks. I want to install GNOME tweaks. If you still want to do it via the terminal, you can of course still do apt install GNOME 
we tool. So you can still install it that way by the terminal if that's what you prefer to do. So now GNOME Tweaks is installed. So let's have a look here. I got this pop up here saying configuration changes require restart. I'm not sure what got installed that needs a restart, but okay. All right, so tweak tools here. We have the themes, cursor, and icon. All three are customized with pop, which is pretty cool. So let me just fire up another window so we have something else to look at. So you can see the icons as well. So let's see what is the difference here. So you have pop dark, which is nice. And slim version, okay. Slim version, pop light, which looks like pop. Oh, I see, so the title bar is the difference. And then slim and then pop slim. So pop slim is the slim version of the default, which I will use because real estate on a screen is worth everything. Uh, cursors, there's no other option than pop. And icons, we have your standard Ubuntu stuff. Login icons, okay. Um, Pop OS branding, not sure what that is. That must be something that they use for other things. Um, but let's just leave it at Pop, that's, that's okay. Uh, I still prefer Arc Maya, and I would probably change it after installing to Arc Maya, but we'll just leave it at that. Uh, then we have desktop extensions. So they've got a few extensions installed. Uh, Do not disturb, which is this button here. So if you're getting notifications and you're sick of closing them, like I will probably get one very soon saying that my mouse is almost dead, um, you can just turn this on and you won't get the pop-ups anymore. It'll just uh, mute the notifications. The System76 power management is also a bit of a mystery. These are things that happen under the hood. So, like I was saying before when I was showing you the web page, I was criticizing the way they were advertising, but I wasn't criticizing the distro. Everything looks the same on the surface, looks very similar. The tweaks, the details are what counts, and that's where all the work is. And there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes uh, in the configuration that you don't necessarily see that doesn't jump out at you, but that takes a lot of work to set up. So I, I will always appreciate that because I've kind of been there, done that. So let's go ahead and run the install. Now, one thing I'm a little weary about, I want to install this on hardware, but it uses a systemd bootloader and not grub. And I read somewhere about there being some incompatibilities and whatnot. So this is a virtual machine. I'm not too concerned about it. Am I gonna install it on hardware? I'm gonna have to actually look into it, to be honest. So here we are where we were at the beginning. Uh, demo mode, clean install, custom advanced. So I'll just pick clean install here and we'll just continue. If I go to custom advanced, you know what? Let me have a look at this while I'm here. So I can always go back. So, right, it just wants me to manually partition. So I'll just go back, do clean install, and it will do everything for me. Select a drive, erase and install. So this is obviously a different installer. This is something that Pop! OS has created. I've never seen this installer before on any other distro. The Ubuntu, Bionic, and Back, who knows how long have used ubiquity as their installer and this is not ubiquity and this is not the debian installer and this is not calamarius this is obviously something they've created themselves and you can see here at this point they want you to encrypt it from the get-go and when you buy one of the machines from system 76 that have pop os installed Apparently it already is encrypted and you get a key to be able to decrypt it if you run into any issues. So here I'm going to say don't encrypt just because this is a virtual machine and I don't really care at this point. I'm just testing it out. 
So now that's it. It's partitioning and extracting files, so I'll see how long this takes. So while it's finishing this up, I figured, you know what, let's have a look at the backgrounds. Backgrounds, oh, I like the lock screen, the giant robot here. I cancel that, let's have a look here. So wallpapers, starry sky, mountains. This one I kind of like, that's kind of cool. Move this out of the way even more here. Old satellite dish, Grand Canyon, moons, a lot of desert stuff. That one's all right. I like the big robot towering over the city. That's nice. And then we've got some big branded ones here with the big name plastered all over. Upwes. There's the default one. This one's kind of neat. All right, so space ones, robots, an office, a jellyfish, desert. A lot of a lot of really cool cartoony ones here. These cartoon robot, almost like uh, Marvin the Martian type stuff that you, if you're my age or older, you would know about. Um, I don't know about anyone in their teens or 20s. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so enough about backgrounds. I'm going to restart the device now. One thing I actually thought about that I wanted to point out is the on the live disk, the virtual guest editions are installed by default, which is awesome, and they work very, very well. Uh, you can see as soon as I resize a window, it immediately resizes the guest. So it is indeed installed, and I can confirm that also in here. Let's do a <clears throat> LSPCI, okay. And if we go up to here, virtual box graphics, kernel driver in use, VBox video, VBox video, detects everything just fine in a virtual machine. So if you want to try this in a virtual machine, it's going to run really well. So I'm going to restart this device. So here we are booted into the OS and we get a little welcome screen. I uh, get to pick your keyboard do preview what does preview do preview actually shows you a picture of your keyboard so now this is this is installed on hardware now so this is like the final configuration i suppose location services i'm going to say no simply because i am an advocate for privacy so for a time zone you're going to pick where you are in the world and it should automatically detect it for you if you're connected to the internet. So pick your time zone, hit next. And here you have your standard Ubuntu GNOME connected online accounts, which I've used, but it's, it's not that great. I, I wouldn't bother doing this personally, really. I mean, I have my email and I connect my calendar to my online calendar manually and it works just fine. So I just skip this. And now this is another thing that makes this very different from other operating systems. I don't know if you noticed, but during the installation, it never asked me for a username or a password. It never created it before installing. So now we're at the point where it wants me to create a user. So Dorian little check boxes saying that yep that name is available of course it is password it's a weak password I know it is and I don't care ready to go start using so now it's gonna boot me back to the login screen I suppose the GDM it does it's a very flat theme very plain I mean in a nice way password I noticed there's no gear or dot here to be able to select a different desktop so and i think that's it so we are now booted 
and online and ready to go. So I've gone and customized my dash to dock extension here. If you don't know what that is, I'll put a link in the corner here of what GNOME extensions are and how to use them. So what do I think about Pop! OS? I think it is pretty cool. It's very, very smooth. It's a, it's a smooth down, simplified version of Ubuntu, which I really, really like. It has a good choice of software. They were pretty smart with uh, tucking things away and hiding them and making it look very polished. The custom icon and custom theme are pretty nice. I would probably still personally change it to what I'm used to simply because it's my favorite. But overall, it's quite nice. Built on Ubuntu, has all the same software available, has the same stability. It's a long-term support, which will be good for several years. I'm still going to have to install this on hardware and see how it runs with the NVIDIA Optimus. I'm very hopeful that it just runs out of the box, no problem, but I have to look into the system D bootloader because I'm a little concerned about how it will work versus Grub and are they going to conflict with each other? Is it going to cause a problem? So I'll look into that before installing it on hardware, but I definitely want to install it on hardware because if the NVIDIA Optimus works out of the box, that's a huge, huge bonus for Pop! OS. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, check it out if you are curious. I will put the link in the description to where you can download it. If you guys have any suggestions for a video, whether it be a how-to or a distro review or just some kind of conversation that you want to have, you can ask me below in the comments, you can tweet to me on Twitter, or you can email me at dorian.slash at gmail.com. Even better, if you record yourself asking the questions, upload it to YouTube and send me the link. Or you can email me an audio file or even a picture. Be funny, be creative, be all kinds of silly, but keep it PG, guys. And I will include it in the video at the beginning. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. And shout out to my patrons, Carl, George, and Matt over on Patreon. Link in the description for that. And you can also follow me over on Twitter at Dorian.slash. Till next time, guys. Bash on.